One of the most exceptional features of the Elementor page builder for WordPress is its ability to simply create columns across rows. However, many users may have come across this particular issue where we have two rows with 33% wide columns contained, but we want them to switch to 50% wide when we switch to tablet. The problem in doing so is we end up with this white space here because there is no ability for columns to span across multiple rows. Hi, my name's David from Flintskin Designs and Assemble WP, and today I'm going to show you how to take that problem and bring into this solution where we can maintain three columns wide across two rows for desktop. But when we switch to tablet, we move to two columns with three rows and every element flows across it. So let's just switch over to the problem page and get into the back end editor to show you how we fix this. Now from within the Elementor Editor, let's get a better understanding of how the column controls themselves work. So when we actually select a column and we go to the column width and select the different tablet or mobile devices, we see we have the ability to change the widths themselves. And we're going to use the standard setup of 50% for tablet and 100% for mobile. But when it comes to the desktop itself, any changes to an individual column will just basically squeeze the other columns to fit accordingly. So there's no way that we can force there to be a wrap over. However, the wrap property is being used when it comes to actually the tablets and the mobile views. So let's actually use this to our advantage when it comes to the desktop and apply those rules using some CSS. So let's remove ourselves this particular section. And we're working on that six set columns that we want to wrap across two rows. So to begin, we need to duplicate out until we have ourselves six columns. And then the first thing we're going to do is go to the section. And from the advanced tab, we're going to give ourselves a CSS class of our own. And I'm going to call this DB column wrap. Now the advantage of this is means that we can move the code outside this section and into our additional CSS within our theme or paste it straight into our child theme. It also means that we only apply this to the sections that we want it to be applied to. So now we go to the DB, sorry, to the custom CSS, and we start our first CSS rule with the DB column wrap. And then we're going to target each of the Elementor columns. And that's simply done just by targeting the Elementor column class. Now we're going to use the flex property, which is um, a culmination of the flex basis, the flex grow in the flex shrink properties all in one. So it's a shorthand property. So the first property expresses whether or not the element can grow or not. So we express it can grow by giving it one. We can express that it can shrink by giving it one. And then we're going to define the width of those columns as a percentage that we want them to be. So we're going to say it's a 33%. Now at this point, we don't see any change because currently these flex grow and shrink options just basically manipulate the content to suit because they can't actually escape the container. So the second property, which is the, we're gonna target the Elementor row, which is what the columns actually sit within. We can now expre express the missing property of flex wrap, wrap. And in doing so, we immediately see now that our columns wrap across the multiple rows. And if we make a change up here, so we want to say four rows, we can set that to 25%. And what you can see is where this grow property is kicking in on these last two rows. So we can target these individually and we can express the fact that they don't change. Or we could just basically say don't make the elements grow themselves. And by removing the flex grow property, and now we have our columns wrapping across. Now it does mean that there's potential additional space starts to appear as the size of the container itself grows, which doesn't really affect the box container. But if we had a full width container, then we might see some issues. And we can continue to add more columns up to a maximum of 10 with Elemental. So now you can see this span across those rows. But now we just need to put in ourselves a media query because as we switch to our tablet and the mobile, we can see that we end up with some funky offense. And here's that particular issue I spoke of when we don't actually have our ability to grow our containers, which is eradicated by putting the one back in place. But let's not worry about that. Let's just wrap ourselves and our rules within a media query. And we only apply it to desktop 
So we want to get ourselves a minimum width. I'm going to go for the 1024 pixels. You may want to push up the 1025 just so it doesn't kick in on some of those other weird sized tablets. And there we go. We now see that on our tablet. So our mobile and our tablet, we still respect the settings that we have within our column layout in the columns. But on desktop, we have our multiple columns filling across multiple rows. So let's just put that back to the six that we had before. And reset our settings here to 33% to get us back to the original issue that we saw. And there we go. That's the simple way of now using a single section with multiple columns spanning across multiple rows. So let's expand upon this and see what we can do with full width sections. So let's begin by changing our content width to full width. Where we can see that the 33% rule still applies. And let's move over to our custom CSS and see what we can do to adjust things. Now, I could do something a little bit controversial here and start working with some fixed unit pixels. So let's express 240 pixels for our flex basis size. And we can see automatically that we now have these fixed size elements moving across the top row. And because we have the flex grow property in place, the bottom row just fills the space around it. So let's remove that grow property for the time being and set it to zero. And what this actual effect gives us is just a free flowing row system where as there's more space to accommodate more elements, we end up with more elements on the single row. And as that reduces, we end up with more rows appearing. Okay, so now there's a couple of things that we have to deal with. For example, everything automatically aligns to the left, which is the default setting is the flex start justification position. So it pushes to the left. And because we don't have the grow option here anymore, we see this little bit of space. So we can do a few things using flex, such as the justify content rule. Okay, so in this particular property will allow us to do several things. So if we just apply center, we can now see that the space is evened out on either side, but the last row content does fall into the middle. Now this is some areas where flex does fall down. There is no way of really controlling the sort of column layout with flex too simply. So let's try a few different options with the justify content. So there's one in particular, which is space between. And this harmony will push the items out to the further edges. And now we can see that we have alignment of our columns and elements. And obviously as, as the screen expands and exchanges, we can then see the misalignment of elements below. So there's one way that we can actually force this last line elements to always push to the left. And the way we do this is by adding ourselves a new um, CSS rule where we're going to take this particular statement here and we're going to create ourselves a pseudo after element, which we need to give it some content. And we just do this by having some empty quotes and we can see there's an element that's already just appeared on the screen or not appeared on the screen, but it's for some changes. And we can save this last element. What we want you to do is just to flex auto. And in doing so, it automatically pushes those items back over to the left because it will automatically occupy all the available space once the other elements have been accounted for. Now, again, the justification isn't perfect. You can see that these columns are out, but this is probably the best fit you're going to get if you want to keep all your elements aligned to one side. And as you can see, the space will just adjust accordingly between them. So that is one way of working with full width grid containment content without using multiple media queries. Of course, there are some other alternatives, which is by adding more media queries. So let's just take ourselves this content back out. Let's remove the justification of content that we just added. And let's return ourselves to our 33% column width as the tutorial started with. Now, at a larger screen size, we may want this to reduce down. So let's just duplicate the media query. Making sure that we then close that media query off. And let's express ourselves a larger monitor size. Let's go for 1920 pixels. And at this size, we want to have four columns, so we set that to 25%. Now, I can just put these back to one and one, so they automatically grow into this space accordingly. So now, when we actually increase the size of our screen, we'll reach a certain point where we now have our four 
columns and we reduce down to three and obviously when we hit our tablet views we still end up with two and mobile is one so we can introduce multiple media queries or we can use fixed width unit sizes we can even express that we want to have these set at a maximum width for any particular size of 240 pixels for example and this will override the percentage because of the growing shrink variables involved and we now see ourselves pushed back into place so again Hopefully you've learned a little bit more about CSS and how you can use it with a wonderful Elementor page builder to make these projects your own.